developments in that tragic and shocking case of cyberbullying. Two girls, only 12 and 14, charged now with felony stalking after a Florida girl jumped to her death last month. Rebecca Sedwick would have turned 13 this weekend. The sheriff now saying he may charge one suspect's parents. Here he is earlier on Fox Today. We know that the parents are morally responsible for their children, and we have investigated. At this point, we're not able to bring criminal charges against the parents, but the investigation's not over. I can tell you that the 14-year-old's parents are in total denial. Oh, my daughter didn't do that. She would never do that. She's never bullied. Well, we know there's been a pattern of activity for the last 10 months. So let's bring in our all-parent panel. Stacey Nelkin, founder of TheDailyAffair.com, mother of two girls and a boy. Liz Stern, founder of DivaMoms.com, she has two boys. And Dr. Robbie Ludwig, psychotherapist, author, and TV host, mother of two girls. Horrible story, Stacey. Horrible. Horrible. Can the parents be charged? Do you think they should be? Wow, it's a really complex issue here. Um, the parents are morally responsible. Are they legally responsible? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not a lawyer. I, I really don't know. But the parents have got to be monitoring what their children are doing. Mm -hmm. So the parents are responsible in the sense that they were not watching what their kids are doing. But you know what really just gets me incensed about this story, Liz, is to hear parents say, well, not my kid. You know, we seem to live in this society now. Nobody mm -hmm. takes responsibility for anything. Which is a huge problem. And parents need to take a step back and they need to realize, you know what, I need to take responsibility for my children. They need to know what's going on. They need, if something's not right or something's not kosher and they know that it's not, they need to deal with it. They need to talk to their children about it. They cannot be in denial about it because we'll only make things worse. Mm -hmm. And parents need to take a responsibility for what their children are doing and not just be like, oh no, not my child. My child couldn't do that. You're talking to well, the wrong child. That's, this, that's not the case here. Mm -hmm. The case that every child, no one's perfect. And every child, some, some, there's always going to be something, but we as a parent need to deal with those situations mm -hmm. and we need to get our head out and, of and, the and ground. We need to acknowledge that sometimes great parents sometimes have troubled kids. That's right. I mean, nobody's perfect. That's now, right. Anybody who might know about this is a psychotherapist <laughs> on the panel. Well, you know, they've done studies where they found that there are bad kids born to good parents. So there, there certainly are situations like that, especially if you give birth to more of a bad seed or a sociopathic kind of child. And of course, they're not diagnosed with that uh, early on, but there certainly are tendencies. But I think what's really most important here is to understand the reality that anybody can be aggressive, anybody can be mean-spirited, and as a parent, we really need to, early on, when, you're, when your kids are actually listening to you, to develop an understanding of the importance of empathy mm -hmm. and, and your, your child's ability to think, wow, how would I feel if this were done to yeah. me? Also, if you're a parent and you're monitoring your child's mm -hmm. social media, as I believe all parents should, yes. then would, then would yeah. you not have seen these they, tweets? This mom should have. have. This mom have. This mom should have. Of been course, watching. it's Absolutely. very difficult because kids are way more tech savvy than any of us are. They know how to keep things hidden. Yep. And so it's challenging. That's why it's all about the relationship between the parent and child. Exactly. And, and more than that, the community at large as well. Mm -hmm. This is something the schools should be involved yep, but in. Parents Un need to be talking to their kids about what's going on socially yes. with them as well as academically. All right, I, I got I to move on to the fat letters okay. because uh, okay. Massachusetts now saying they're not going to send these fat letters home based right. on BMI, you know, which is a formula mm -hmm. about weight and height. And I was a fat kid, okay? I would have gotten one of these letters. I'm not sure how my parents would have felt about it or how I would have felt about it. Do you think it's a good idea, Liz, that they're not going to send them home anymore? I think it's a great idea that they're not sending these letters home anymore. I think it's absolutely ridiculous in the first place that the school even thought that it's their responsibility to write these letters and have these letters go home to the families. Parents know, children know if they're not where they should be, if they are a little obese, oh, not a little obese, if they're obese or if they're fat. But they don't denial. Need, but they don't need more issues. No, but yeah, this is the pediatrician need, needs to right, step in. This is for the parents. Parents and the yes. pediatricians, not the school. Well, well, but here's the case. I interviewed some of these kids who have received these letters in the mm -hmm. past, and they're not fat. 
Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's they're, even that's worse. Worse. They're, they're not <laughs> fat. Yeah. So what that's about crazy. eating disorders and starting them to be overly concerned mm -hmm. about their really weight in an era where we're already fighting that, Robbie? Listen, you don't want to shame a child and humiliate them and make them feel badly about themselves because that certainly can trigger an eating disorder. Um, but you certainly want to make parents aware. And we are assuming that all parents are educated about the ideal weight. And I do think that it really should come from a pediatrician. But maybe Maybe some of these parents don't have a regular pediatrician. Maybe they're part of a clinic setting. And so the school has to find a way to step in and raise an awareness without harming a child's psyche so that they go through their life saying, I'm a fat child, I'll be a fat adult, fat is just my, my future. All right, uh, raise, raise your hand. When you were growing up, did you have to do chores? Oh, yeah. And I still do. <laughs> I was you, you didn't have to do chores? Uh, not wow. really. And when I was asked once, my sister still complained about this because I hid in the bathroom. I was like, I got to go you to the bathroom. What? Every week, I got to vacuum the kitchen floor, and I hated it. But you know what? My kids do chores. And the new trend now is that apparently kids are so entitled in our society yeah. that parents are not enforcing chores anymore. Stacy, Terrible. I, my daughter, I just had this conversation last night. Unless you want spending money, and privileges on the internet, you are going to walk our two dogs at least once a day. That's it. Right. The dogs that she begged for, of by course. the way. Of course. But uh, this is something, all, and my kids know they have to make their beds. Mm -hmm. They have to bring their dishes to the sink. I mean, the kids are away. so spoiled it's, today. To it's me, that's terrible. a bare minimum to bring your terrible. dishes to the sink. Bare Listen. minimum. Okay. <laughs> Not my house. So as, as a mom of two young boys, nine and six-year-olds, it is very important and make it very clear in my house that they have to do their chores. Also, if they want to play video games, if they want to go to their after-school activities, it's very important that they know that they have to be responsible in the home. And they have to earn it and in they my have house. To earn it. Robbie, if you didn't have to do chores, are you going to tell me that your kids don't do chores? You know what? I try to enforce it. I'm not so great at it. And in part, it's because they're so overwhelmed with the schoolwork and everything else that they have to do that <laughs> I struggle with, oh, I want to make their life easy. But I understand that they have to be responsible in the real world. So in reality, I have a hard time with it, but I know it's important. All right, two seconds to make the bed. That's my, that's my final comment. Still time to do the homework. Ladies, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. We've heard what some things the shutdown meant to Senator Ted Cruz and the Tea Party and Speaker Boehner. We've heard a lot about that. So how does the geo...